brothers and sisters, shalom, assalamu alaikum. It's wonderful to be back with you here on Points of Light Radio and continuing our journey, but it's also doubly wonderful to be back with you here to hopefully answer a question that I po- I've been posing to you ever since my inaugural segment of Points of Light Radio. And that question simply was, how do we keep these lodges and fraternal organizations relevant in 2023 with the millennials and any generations that have followed them and will be following them? How do we keep it relevant? How do we keep fraternalism relevant? Right? And the way we will be answering, at least going a long way to answering that question is that we'll be shedding some light on some of the great work that one of these fraternal organizations is doing. Now, recently, I came across a tweet from the Vancouver Odd Fellows, and this tweet dated February 17th said that they were opening a warming center for the homeless and were accepting warm clothing donations. Right now, here to discuss this exciting development with us is Christopher Thompson. He's a member of the International Odd Fellows Lodge Number no. Ninety in Vancouver, British Columbia. You know, I'm right now. This is a great, you know, you know, very worthy venture that they're doing. I'm proud to be helping out, but also, like I said, happy to be at least going a long way to answering that question that I had of how to keep these, how to keep fraternalism relevant, right? So without further discussion here on my part, let's go fellowship with Mr. Thompson. But are you still searching for the light? Are you still thirsty for knowledge? Then just trim your lamp and follow me. Ladies and gentlemen, seekers of light and secret knowledge wherever you may be, you are listening to Points of Light Radio, the podcast dedicated to taking you past the apron and behind the closed doors of lodges everywhere. And here is your host, Stan Miller. Hey, Mr. Thompson. Welcome to Points of Light Radio, sir. Thank you. And you were a member of the Vancouver Oddfellows. Yes, I am. I've been a member for about 10 years. Okay. And uh, which which particular lodge do you belong to in Vancouver? I understand there's a couple of them. Yeah. In Vancouver, we have Lodge Number 90, which is is the only active lodge in Vancouver. Uh, There are some, there are four lodges in Victoria. Vancouver has one main active lodge, and that's Lodge 90. Okay. And why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself here today? Uh, Okay. Um, I joined the Oddfellows about uh, 10 years ago. I already knew some of the guys in there. I didn't know that they were odd fellows, but I knew them from um, working with them in, in prior uh, occupations, child care services, social services, and so on. And and um, and one of them asked me to to join, and I went to the um, went to the hall. I had been there before um, doing charity work for the Walkathon for Kids with Cancer, uh, raising money for um, for parents and uh, families who have a kid in cancer treatment. So all the money would go directly to them. So I'd been familiar with the hall. Um, and then uh, joining it was um, was interesting. The, the hall itself is absolutely wonderful. Um, in my outside life, uh, I'm currently an instructor in the criminology department at Kwanlin University. Um, and prior to that, I worked in uh, community corrections um, as a uh, as an instructor and a developer uh, at the Justice Institute of British Columbia. So most of my background has been um, revolved around uh, criminal justice and social justice. So uh, tell us a little bit about your lodge, first of all. Um, the lodge uh, actually just celebrated 100 years. Uh, the building itself has been around since uh, 1922. So last 
um, summer, we held a 100th uh, anniversary uh, and invited our um, grandmaster and some other people um, uh, to the opening. And it was good. We did a public um, uh, opening. So we had you know, posters, we had food, we had uh, set up for public can come by, see the building, um, understand uh, how we do benevolent, benevolence uh, in terms of rentals, um, the groups we work with. And so it was, it was quite, quite successful. So the lodge itself um, is pretty active now. It wasn't as active a few years ago um, in terms of rentals and so on. But right now we're, we're very active. And have you ever held any offices within the lodge or do you hold any offices? Yes, I have. I've held, um, I started off as a, uh, uh, as a financial secretary. Uh, I moved into recording secretary. I then went to a vice grand I went to Noble Grand, and then I, my last position was treasurer. Okay, Noble Grand Day. Eh? Okay. Now, I want to. Uh, the reason I, I've called, I've uh, we we're having this meeting is I wanted to speak to you today about some exciting uh, news that I read on your Twitter account. Your lodge is uh, has opened a warming center. Now, let's talk about that. Yeah, the, we're, we're very proud of this. Uh, the history goes back as such. It's about three, we did about a third year now. I um, I think I was, I'm not sure I was vice grant at the time, and uh, an article came up in the paper about a warming center. So when the temperature gets down to what it feels like below five, um, the city opens up what's called warming centers. Some of them are more active than others, but if it hits a certain temperature, they have these warming centers. And so um, the uh, people would come in, basically coming out of the cold they're allowed about i think about eight nine hours um just to so they don't freeze um i got up and talked about it in the lodge and i <laughs> one of the few times i actually got quite uh verbally um assertive uh and i said part of our creed is we're leaving the distress if we don't do this uh we're just not living up to what we're supposed to be doing and so there was a lot of pushback um like I say, I, it's not my style to do that, but I was really quite adamant that we open up our hall and do it. We had a lot of discussion about uh, uh, what could be, you know, um, damage to the hall. Uh, are these guys going to bring in drugs, dogs, carts, problems, neighbors? And eventually um, a couple of people came around and then uh, more people came around. And so uh, we organized with the city. And they came and approved our place. There was a lot of issues uh, we had to go through with Church of Health Department, COVID protocols at the time, because COVID was still very much part of it. Um, and so the city uh, gave us uh, three workers or so. Um, we would They would provide the breakfast. Our members just, once they got on, they jumped on board. So we're making meals for these guys when they come in. At, uh, they're allowed to come in, I think, at 9.30 at night. The city has staffing for that. Um, our Our... Our lodge members you know, made meals for these guys, got to know them pretty well, got to know the city staff. Uh, we always had one of our lodge members stay overnight just um, to be a presence in the building. And then uh, we've had, we've had our some of our members come at 6.30 in the morning and make a hot breakfast for these guys. So when they have to leave at 8.30, they're walking with a hot meal in their hand, even, if they got a, even though they got a breakfast uh, in the hall. So it's become quite popular. Now we're in, the, I guess, year three of this. The city staff love us um, because the, the the workers want to come there. We provide a lot more warmth and care and love than they do in the other warming centers. Um, the the homeless guys themselves, we, we know some of them now. There have been a few regulars, but it does change over. And they've overwhelmingly said, we feel safer here. It's quiet. You guys care about us. We're not just thrown on the floor like we are in other places. Um and we get to know you. And so it's really grown. It's, it's, it's been quite amazing. Our, um, uh, one of our past on my grands, a guy named uh, Walter Wells, um, uh, has won a meritori meritorious service award, which is a pretty high award uh, in Odd Fellowship for his uh, management of this warming center, which takes a lot in terms of who's doing what shift, who's cooking. Um, uh, we're allowed up to 20, 25 guys to come in, or men and women, actually. Um, we have uh, mattresses on the floor. They're all spaced out. But it takes a lot of work in terms of organizing. People want to donate. Or the Twitter account's gone quite uh, uh, popular, so people have donated money and clothing. And we wanted to avoid people just tapping off a wet shirt or just, you know, 
crap they would dump into a dumpster and we don't want that kind of clothing we said look it's got to be well new if possible um we don't need certain things we do need warm socks we do need gloves we do need toques uh big shirts we don't need your old jacket that's ripped up and stuff that you would just normally toss and so the public's been very good the apartment that is next to our lodge we were concerned about them and they made a, an initial complaint uh, we talked to them because some of the guys when they left in the morning were leaving um garbage and some food uh, occasionally they'd be shooting up um the drugs in front and so we used to look at when the when the day is done you know 8 30 in the morning you guys gotta go uh, you really have to to move along the block and, and no more garbage no more fixing outside the lodge and so um they've stopped that and the neighbors in return <laughs> have been incredible they've they've donated some some clothing um we've gone with them to pick up if there's any like needles or anything else there's a little patch of grass outside our lodge and people who walk the dog the dog you know u- urinates on it so there was little things that we had to do um that really helped the neighbors that told them that we care um that we don't want any problems we appreciate the fact that you know at at 9 30 at night till 8 30 in the morning um there's some people that they may think look sketchy uh coming to the building right beside them but we've said anytime you want to come in you want to take a look we're open we don't want to hide anything and so they've been incredibly supportive it's been really good well and this is good and uh you haven't had any damage to the lodge itself you have uh, we did um we had uh, a door damaged by one of the guys uh that came in and and he um he was known to the other um uh, homeless people we, we just call them clients we have a proper name for them really just guys women um they uh he'd come in he disrupted some stuff and bothered some of the other people so we'd asked him to leave and say look you can come back the next night but you can't you can't tonight you've disrupted too many people came back again allegedly stole something and so then we said look, we just escorted them out everybody's uh, trained in uh non-violent crisis intervention so it's you know we can just do that and then he came back and he was quite angry and then he kicked out a window of the of the door um which did two things um one is we um we were able to replace with proper glass so it doesn't shatter like you well you've worked in the prisons you understand that some glass can you know with wire you can do anything you want to it but it's never going to break so we um we got one of those installed the city paid for it we found out the guy had unfortunately gone back on drugs he was apparently a really good guy and he just got back into drugs and so that didn't help his situation but that's been the only major damage i should back up a bit and mention a guy's name that's been instrumental in this he's a homeless man his name's stanley woodvine he has a he has a twitter account he's been homeless since 2013. He used to be a graphic artist for a paper called the georgia Strait at some point his life just went off the rails and he has um uh, got us access to all sorts of information about homeless people told us where some of them are helped us find them so we can offer them food and shelter he's actually he's really politically oriented he is on top of civic politics provincial politics um like you wouldn't believe he blogs each day um and uh and he lives um, in this uh, uh, parking garage where he has a, um, a relationship with the people that own the building. He's um, he's out of there at 7.30 in the morning with his cart and everything else, and he's back at 5 at night. He's been there for years. He's beside a big, warm radiator. Interesting guy. Very interesting guy. And he has been an enormous help to us. Um, as a for instance, uh, McDonald's here in Vancouver was a, for some reason, was charging uh, 25 cents for a paper cup of coffee, this, this added charge. McDonald's arranged with us to have all these breakfast coupons, which we, the guys would get. They could go to McDonald's, you know, because they're out of our place at seven in the morning and they have something to eat at McDonald's. He was pretty good about it. But none of these guys have change, right? They just don't have any money most of the time. So they had these coupons. So Stanley pointed this out uh and, and and mentioned it to the city uh and the city reversed its uh, policy uh for 25 cents for paper cups because they realized it was quite discriminatory uh for those that don't carry around change and not too many people do and so just little things like that he was phenomenal at uh, pointing that out to us and uh they changed it so it was good so he's been really good in terms of helping us what uh homeless people need in terms of food clothing what's really um what's what's really important to them and what they need as opposed to what people might think you know um so it's been we've we've all been schooled pretty well on uh, on learning about homelessness 
that homelessness doesn't happen um, like 365 days a year. Some people become homeless for a week or two weeks, a month, a missed check, uh, a, a payment owed to you, some money that you're going to pay some rent. The guy didn't show up. Now, all of a sudden, you got no place to stay. It's not that far away for many people. It's a paycheck away, to tell you the truth, for, for many people. Just being homeless two weeks, four weeks, whatever. It's not that far away. It really isn't. But I think you'll agree. Uh, is this what the odd fellows need to do to move forward? More of this sort of thing? Oh, a- absolutely. I think any any kind like of benevolence. Any fraternal organization, actually. Yeah, any fraternal organization. Most do have benevolence. Um, they really... I, I, like I said, we there was some resistance. People thought the um, they were afraid of homeless people. Um, they were afraid of the damage to the building. And really, once they did a little, you know, a, a little review and opened their hearts and opened their ears a little bit more, uh, they realized that this was this was possible. There are, I think, now I got to get this straight. I think there's nineteen. There's 19 other sort of, not like lodges, but halls like ours in Vancouver. There's different cultures that have different halls, you know, for weddings and rentals and so on. And none of them are opening up for the, for the homeless. It's, it's, it's staggering to think all these places who are good organizations, you know, Rotarians, Optimists, Kiwanis, and Lions, and uh, they're not opening up their halls uh, for something like this. So I think, you know, they can look and they could offer this. And I, I think given your motto as well, friendship, love, and truth, you're not just friendly with each other. You have to be friendly with those outside of Odd Fellowship, right? Yep. And, and, and for people who really are looking to, 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 at, these, at these organizations saying, well, what would we do? Like, especially with millennials and stuff, they talk about their social conscience. This is a great way to advertise that the, the, the lodge has, the, the odd fellows have a social conscience here that they really yeah. want to be out there helping people. Yeah, absolutely true. And it does, uh, you know, the, the original thing of, um, you know, burying the dead, educating the orphan, visiting the sick. I mean, those things we don't do so much anymore. Um, but the relieving the distress, absolutely, we can live up to that. And um, I think a lot of social organizations could really do some good grassroots work, even with the opioid problem, with all sorts of stuff, because it's not get solved singularly at the federal, provincial, or civic level. But there's a lot of little things that can happen um, that organizations could really do um, and offer some help. And I and I, it would be nice to see people do a little bit more than that instead of just pointing a finger at government or something going, you guys are responsible. Um, if you've ever been to Vancouver and seen there's a section of downtown east side, which is frightening. That's just, you know, wall to wall tents and people and, and drug addiction and mental illness and so on. Um, one of the things that we do is every Friday, not every, every fourth Friday. So the end of Friday each month, a uh, bunch of the odd fellows, we go down to the first United church and we help plate meals for lunch. And we also donate money. Um, so every fourth Friday we go down and it, they serve about um, about 165 people. It's quite quick, a massive, uh, no barriers. You can be whatever shape to come in. Um, and they, uh, the church serves them. It's pretty good. It's a nice hot breakfast or well, hot lunch, actually. And so what we do is we'll take four or five of our volunteers and go down there and help them plate the meals, serve the meals. Um, and we also donate money to the, uh, to the church itself um, for, uh, for their meals. By the way, how many people are in your lodge? How many members? Uh, we have well, we have uh, probably about 50 plus members, but active members is probably, well, actually, we just crowded about 25 or so now active members, which is a lot for, for, for a meeting. Um, Victoria has uh, uh, more there. They've had some more community outreach than we have, but we've had a turnover um and we've got a lot of we got a mix now some younger members some newer members some older members and right now the warming center has really um got people united and so everybody's on board doing something uh we just raised a bunch of money for the uh, ukraine relief we had a big ukrainian dance uh, with ukrainian food we raised uh, nine thousand dollars um to give to red cross uh, we're about to do a St. Patrick's, and so that's the raising money for that is going to go to um, uh, Make a Wish Foundation. Uh, we'll be doing something hopefully in June this year uh, for the Walkathon f- um, for kids with cancer. And so, like I said, every penny goes to a, a family as a kid in a, in a treatment at uh, Vancouver uh, Children's Center Oncology. So we try and do this on a regular basis. We have fun ourselves, but we we want to 
to not just raise money, but help people um, to raise money for a cause, or maybe they can use our hall at a reduced rate for free. And that's a type of benevolence instead of just giving money out, which that's easy to do, but no one has any skin in the game. So we always say, hey, if you got something you're involved in, you better be involved in it. If you want some benevolence, come to us, but don't just say, I know someone or I think it's a good organization. Have some skin in the game, know somebody, have volunteer there, do something. And so that's kind of how we've done it with our benevolence now is everybody's got to have some connection to the, whatever organization they, uh, they're they promoting uh, for any kind of benevolence. I can say whether it's just a free um, hall one rental or reduced rate. And so uh, it's worked out and people have... Um, I've really jumped on board with that fact <laughs> to the point that uh, people have so many organizations and charities that they, they would like to help. It only gets a little feisty. Sometimes we go oh, down yeah. and do three or four, but like I say, everybody's got, uh, it's got some skin in the game uh, in doing that. So what are the future plans here now for this? Are you going to expand this effort or are you going to uh, got other projects you're working on? We actually we we're, we're actually doing a lot. We have uh, some new members who are really good in terms of administratively and financially. So we've looked at our at the asset of our building, um, the total asset of the building. We looked at our money, and we're really um, uh, uh, taking a really good administrative view of what we can do uh, with our hall and with money. We can't just continue to give out money constantly. We'll, we'll drain yeah. ourselves eventually. So we're looking at new ways to do benevolence, uh, which is to utilize our assets. Which we have a, a beautiful big hall. It's a, it's a beautiful hall. You can see it online. And then we have an upstairs. It's like a, it's like a private club. It holds about 45. And so we've gone to different charities. And we said, you can use this for you know, half rate or qu- quarter rate, whatever, if you'd like to um, um use a hall for whatever it is that you're using it for most of them are like social service organizations or places that couldn't get a hall like this because the prices are too steep and so we're looking out going that's our benevolence now is to reach out to more community groups say get to use our hall we want the public to see that we're there you can you can come utilize us you can join you can donate so we're having a much more um wider presence in the community right now as you know that the uh the Warmer Center has garnered a lot of media attention. We, at least in Vancouver, a lot of TV, radio, and so on. Um, and people have been very, very supportive of it. So we're hoping to turn that into a, an ongoing situation where people realize we're doing this all year. We're trying to help others in the community. And, uh, and so, yeah, it's growing. We're, we've been very impressed. We've been incredibly um, lucky that people have just donated uh, out of just off of Twitter seeing that and donated money like more we never expected any of this so all the money we get was turning right back into the warming center you know getting some nice clothes a hat gloves because some of these guys i mean you can buy the really nice set of work socks and work gloves 10 minutes down the road they may take them off or throw them away but that doesn't matter the fact is they have them we don't put any rules on that because what's the point you know these people are living a really tough life and uh if you're homeless the last time I'm going to say, well, I'm going to give you a pair of socks. you got to keep it till next time. I'm giving you a pair of socks today because it's the right thing to do. I hope you keep them for as long as you can. You know, we're not making rules around that. Well, Mr. Thompson, I thank you for your time today. And uh, I, I want to commend you for this because, like I said, the, the, the motto of the Odd Fellows is friendship, love, and truth. And uh, you know what? You're putting this into practice. It's wonderful to see this being put into practice and you're taking the lodge forward. But like I said, involving in the community. So I appreciate that. Yeah. And, and thank you for, uh, for letting us come on and talk about it. We're, we're proud of it. And, uh, and, and we really, we really feel strong about it. Okay. Thank you, sir. Have a great day. Okay. Thank you very much. Take care. Christopher Thompson, brothers and sisters. Wasn't that wonderful? to see what they were doing, right? This is where I went with what I, with what I, uh, with that interview, right? So many times here on Points of Light Radio, I said, how do we keep fraternalism and these lodges relevant in this day and age, right? I talked about, you know, how do we keep, I talked about trying to, raise the profile of these different fraternal organizations. Well, this is an excellent way to do it. And it's wonderful, like I keep saying, that the Odd Fellows of Vancouver are keeping their lodge alive, as well as staying relevant in today's world, right? 
I mean, there's a huge homeless issue, not just in Vancouver, but in many cities across North America, right? And they're helping keep their lodge relevant and raise the awareness of it, as well as doing a great work in their community, right? Uh, the way I, the, one of the big things I took from this is the motto of the Odd Fellows, if you've ever looked at their logo, is friendship, love, and truth. First of all, they're keeping, they're staying true to that, right? Because look at it this way, friendship, they're being friends, not just to each other, but to those outside their organization, in particular, the homeless in this case, right? They're putting their love into action by opening a warming center and, and you know, and taking and giving out clothing donations, you know, donations of warm clothing, and they're staying true to their goals and the oaths of the odd fellows. I love that, right? Looking after the less fortunate, right? And I'd love to and will have him back just to see how this is going and how, how it goes in the future. But that's all I have time for today, brothers and sisters, because I do, believe it or not, have another guest that I have to be uh, interviewing here in a few minutes. So I'm going to have to let you go. But before I go, I want to remind you that this podcast is available on both YouTube and Spreaker. Please share, like, and subscribe when viewing Points of Light Radio on YouTube. And I, I keep saying this. I want to see some comments and input uh, in you know here on YouTube. Uh, in the detail section of this podcast, I want to draw your attention to a few things. First of all, is there's a link to the Odd Fellows Lodge in Vancouver, British Columbia. You can also see the link to my Facebook page, which you can follow at points of light uh, at facebook.com slash points of light radio. My Twitter handle is at PO Light Radio. You can see the link to my Spotify channel and my Points of Light Radio store. But until we meet again, brothers and sisters, it's been a pleasure fellowshipping with you today. But until we meet again, just step into the light.